recording and then I'll sh say share screen uh, and we'll go to, to view. So um, Kylie, you, you'll just have to take my word for it, but we're looking at the view screen at the moment. Um, Julianne, right. can you see that okay? Yeah, I can see that. So I'll just, um, for the next half an hour, so go through a, a few things. Um, this is being recorded for the benefit of others, or if you're really keen, you can look back over them again. Uh, so uh, this semester is, is similar to the, the previous one. Um, obviously, we've got two units, principles and practice again. Principles four, practice fourth. Um, in principles, mm -hmm. there's sort of two subunits, cardiovascular pathophysiology, and we'll be looking at ischemic heart disease, um, at endocarditis, prosthetic valves, and diseases of the aorta, as well as some non-echo imaging modalities. And to um, as part of that, we'll be doing some some case well. We'll be doing a case study and, and a research project. And then in practice, where sort of, I guess this is the real crux of what we're going to be doing this semester, um, image acquisition and measurement, all leading up to the final practical exam, but some communication and, and uh, professional practice and development um, aspects as well. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what the the, the contents are um, generally speaking. Key dates. Um, you can see where I'm I'm clicking, Julianne, to, to yeah. those. Um, so key dates for this semester. Um, the first thing to do, um, if you have not enrolled yet, just make sure you enroll in the two units. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that that should certainly be open. Um, yeah. Uh, census date is the 27th of August. So if, if for whatever reason, you know, things, you know, go pear shaped, so that, that's sort of the, the, the time at which, you know, you can withdraw without penalty. After that, it's not impossible, but it just gets more difficult. Yeah. The first assessment items, an online exam, and you guys know what online exams look like. That's in week six. And then in week seven, It'll be uh, Wednesday, the 12th of September is the date that I'll invite you guys to come in. Now, um, I'm just in the, the final um, throes of, of putting everything together. But in short, um, if you want to come in and spend the morning in the cath lab, there'll be two cath labs running, one um, uh, which will likely be um, uh, an interventionalist, um, you know, depending on, on what's been scheduled, but, but you know, um, speaking, et cetera, et cetera. And the other one, more EP based things. So you can come in and observe those all morning. And then in the afternoon, we'll do some more of the, the kind of things that we normally do, focusing on some imaging skills. Um, yep. That's, yeah, that's in, in sort of early to mid-September. Um, okay. The first professional, so there are two professional, what are called professional tasks, and in short, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is, is acquire um, or record um, uh, on a USB um, a, a, a study that you guys do, and I'll go into the details about that. Um, so twice. One study focused on, on ventric ventricular function, another study focused on valvular function. So they're the two professional tasks and when we look at the learning guides in a moment, I'll go through a bit yeah. more detail. Mm -hmm. The on-campus seminar, there's, there's a second one and again, uh, and that one will be in October. That'll be, might be an all-day scenario, it'll be an afternoon, but what I hope to do, there'll be two aspects to that. It'll be close to the, the time that the research report and the case studies are due so it would be a chance for you guys to come in and ask lots of questions about those and secondly a chance um, to really work on any aspects of the imaging sequence that you might 
you know, be particularly concerned about or, or really want to refine. Mm -hmm. So there will be two parts to that evening. Maybe the first part will be on a 90 minutes or so, and the second part uh, for a similar time, we'll have a number of volunteers there for the second time. I'll try and get you guys to, to sort of really um, lead in terms of what images you want to take. Um, we can we can go through from you know the sequence from A to Z, but I'm not quite sure that'll be the best way to utilise our time. So, yeah. Anyway, and then um, to try and avoid the the difficulty um, with regards to the practical exam at the end of the year, you guys will have a practical exam on a day completely separate to the first years. So um, we've we've put in uh, uh, requests to the assessment people, and it, it'll be in the week starting 12th of November, but you guys will likely be um, asked to come in on a Friday and you'll be given a specific time um, to come in and you'll spend an hour here doing a full study on a person with a pathology as your mm -hmm. final practical exam. And then the only thing to do after that will be, will be the logbook. So they're the key dates and I'll, I'll go through those things um, in, in a moment. Uh, any questions just while we're, while you might be thinking of them? No. No? Good. Okay. No. <laughs> I'll keep going. Um, uh, so I'm just showing a lecture screen now, um, uh, Kylie. The, all the lectures happen in the first half of the semester and there's what, six lectures. Five of them will be online. The first one starting next week. There will be one lecture face to face when you come in for that on campus seminar that involves some, some observation in the cath lab and Fernando is just going to go through a, a couple of things related to professional practice that'll be the only on, on uh, or face to face lecture. Um, so by the time we've sort of reached um, September um, we'll be through all the lectures. Nonetheless you guys can as always, you can go back and, and watch them as many times as, as you need to. Um, and then the assessment timetable. Uh, assessments uh, are mainly in the, in the second half of the semester. Um, the idea being to give you guys a little bit of lead time in order to, to get your mind around, especially the, the you know, the um, research report and the case report, but also to start thinking about um, the two um, uh, uh, studies that you need to you need to acquire. Um, may I suggest that you just you know, you take your time so that you really submit a good quality um, you know exam that you know shows all the all the expertise that you guys have developed over the over the time you've been imaging. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, of course. The, the logbook will be due at the very end of the semester too. Um, now, did I want to say anything else there? Don't think so. Um, I might go to um, via views. You can access the learning guides. So the learning guides are sort of the official document that the, the university uses. So if there's there's nothing listed on the learning guides. Um, it's uh, it, it's, <laughs> it's official, but um, I'm just scrolling down through them, and I'll and I'll point out um, the assessment items for in the first place principles of cardiac sonography four. So three assessment items: a quiz, which is weighted 15% a report 40% and a case study 45%. Mm -hmm. There's one, one threshold item and that's the case study. So that means that, um, yeah, you've got to, got to pass the case study in order to pass the, pass the semester. Yeah. Very confident that you guys can, you guys can do. Um, you, you, you've submitted particularly good case studies, um, the two of you, and there were some other good case studies as well by people. Um, the next page just shows um, some of the details of the, the online exam. 15 multiple choice questions um, and leading up to the, to the exam, I'll give you um, details of all that will be in the exam. But in short, it'll be 
related to the principles of cardiac sonography lectures. And um, the, the three lectures that you'll see prior to that exam um, will be accessible. Um, the research report. Uh, so on the page we're looking at here, Julianne, you'll see halfway down the page, I'm, I'm sorry, the formatting is dictated to us now by um, this computer generated, um, how do you say, it, it, it gives us a template wherein we've got to um, enter all our, <laughs> all the things, but I, I can't sort of play with things too much. So instructions aren't at the top of this particular page there, halfway down. So the instructions are for this, the, the, the report, the report is to write a report about the essential aspects of one advanced echocardiographic technique. So what you guys get to do a 40% um, weighted item is, is choose either 3D echo, um, strain imaging or contrast and write a, re, a research report about that. So the aspects of the report, um, you know, title, introduction, evaluation, conclusion and references, as you can see there. Um, it, the word length is, is 1200 words style it's a, a word doc um, formatted as uh, as per the, the instructions there with some images um, you know showing different aspects of what you're trying to highlight in in your research report um, again submission for this will be via Turnitin and down the bottom there you've got a brief marking criteria I will make a more complete marking criteria available. I just didn't think for the learning guide that it was worth putting in, you know, a couple of pages of, of, um, of marking criteria, but a more developed one than that would be available. But that sort of gives you um, an idea here of what the introduction involves, evaluation, conclusion, references, um, etc. Is that somewhat clear? Yeah. yeah. So that's that's the research report. The case study will be very similar to last time. Um, uh, yeah, a similar weighting, structure, etc. The instructions for this one again are halfway down the page, and, and this time, what I I'm going to ask you to do is compare um, uh, echo with one other imaging modality. Um, that you've used in the management of a patient. So say for example, you know, a patient came in for a stress echo and, and it was a positive stress echo and you're involved in, in acquiring those images. The patient went and had a CT angiogram or conventional angiogram and, and then was sent, you know, for a stent or, or, or a bypass or something like that. Gather that case, you know, together and, and use you know, sort of the echo details and the other imaging or if there are multiple imaging modalities to, to, to bring together a really nice case study about, you know, the management of that patient. Um, if, if there's not one, if you don't have any heart disease, you can certainly twist my arm if you do something like, I don't know, um, you know, if you find someone with, I don't know, aortic dissection or something really interesting like that. Mm. As, as we're trying to sort of really focus on ischemic heart disease in this, this semester, I'd prefer you to try and focus on, on one from that. Mm. Obviously, you can use MRI or nuclear imaging too. Um, so that's, that's the case study. While I'm thinking of case studies, I'll just move away from that for a moment. Um, via views, um, um, using the menu on the left hand side if you go into semester two there's a folder called resources and there are a couple of exemplar case reports there so there's one folder called case report writing tips and that's mm -hmm. got, um that's got a an article um that was available to you guys last semester as well about sort of how to write a case report um if you've read that um, you can read it again or, or, or not. But I've also got put in a couple of exemplar ones. So there's one about 
um, papillary fibroelastoma, which is from the case journal um, from last year. Um, this particular case study is a little bit shorter than the one that um, I'll be asking you guys to submit, but it gives you an idea of, you know, really how to structure your um, your your case report. There's another exemplar one um, on LV apical aneurysm um, with a bit of a twist as well, um, and and that one um, was published um, uh, in 2017 as well, and. It's more the length that, that I'm after um, with lots of images and, and, and references as well. So you guys have got sort of access to those just to help you to sort of really make the most of, of this particular case, case report. Um, am I going too quickly, too slow, about the right pace? No, I'm fine. Going okay? Uh, all good. All good. Great. So. So that's the um, that's the sort of nuts and bolts of principles of cardiac sonography. Um, why don't we go to the learning guide? Sorry, just missed it to the learning guide for practice of cardiac sonography. Um, just make that a little bit smaller. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, there's these are for you guys to read through. Um, you can, you know, you can see things like unit learning outcomes and course learning outcomes and how they're all related. Um, there are four assessment items for practice of cardiac sonography, um, two professional tasks, the practical exam, and the logbook. There are two threshold items, so the practical exam is, is threshold. Um, with that in mind, to achieve a pass in the practical exam, you need to get 65% or more. Um, I, again, I will give you really detailed marking criteria for the practical exam. Um, and I'm, I'm really confident that, that you guys are, have got all the skills that you are needed to, to pass that. Mm -hmm. and the So here's some more details about the professional task. So the first professional task is on, on ventricular function. Uh, Hello. We are what I ask you to do is uh, store all images in DICOM format, save them on a, a memory stick. If possible, uh, have only two um, files on the memory stick. One, the, the, the images in DICOM format and another, the, the report related to that particular case. And send them to this particular address so that using the DICOM viewer I've got here, I can, I can go through that particular case. Um, the um, marking criteria um, are here. In short, if you follow the um, the imaging sequence that you guys have, and I'll, I'll point it out to you again on views where it is, you should have absolutely no problem with passing this. Obviously, you want to be optimizing imaging, optimizing images, making measurements, you know, in the appropriate way. With regards to how to display images, please just make sure that um, on the machine that you use for that particular case, you ensure that the two images um, you display frequency and frame rate. <clears throat> and for color images, you show, show frame rate. For PW and tissue images, uh, you show sample volume size. So they're all there in detail um, in the format section of that particular book um, yeah, related to this particular task. The other professional task is very similar in terms of the way um, I want you to, to, to store images, but this one asks you to focus on ventric, uh, sorry, on valvular function. But the other one, ventricular function, it can either be 
LV or RV, I don't mind. If it's LV, you can choose systolic function or diastolic function, I don't mind. With regards to valvular function, you can choose any one of the heart valves. Obviously, you know, the aortic valve and mitral valve are going to be the ones that are most likely to have pathologies related to. But if there's an interesting one that you feel really happy that you've gone through all the imaging sequences really well for, you know, a tricuspid valve or something like that, I'm, I'm more than happy for you to, to submit one of those. But again, what, what I suggest you do is, is choose a, choose a study that you've done a really good job of, of, of imaging. So it doesn't necessarily have to be one that sort of grabs <laughs> the attention as it were in, in terms of being a really interesting case, but just one that you've been really thorough and you've been really happy about how you've gone about acquiring all the images in terms of sequence, in terms of image quality, etc., etc. So they're the two professional tasks. The practical exam, um, as I was saying, um, you'll come at the end of the semester um, and I end an hour. Um, there's a, there's a typo here. It's not two hours long. It's, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> an hour in duration. Um, imaging time, you'll be given 45 minutes imaging time and then, um, five minutes at the end to review the images, some questions so that you can sort of give some idea of, of a report. With regards to answering questions, the you know the normal values document it will be there. So if you know if we ask you, okay, to to for example to estimate um, uh, pulmonary um, artery systolic pressure, you know you can you can refer to the normal values document just to you know for, in terms of estimating the right atrial pressure, for example. So mm -hmm. it will be all there. Um, as, as with the other ones, I will send a very detailed, um, uh, post a very detailed marking criteria for this particular one. Nonetheless, you can see here, um, the way that the, the, uh, the practical exam is going to be marked. Most of the marks are available for apical images because if you look at the imaging sequence, you, you're expected to spend most time acquiring and measuring apical images, you know, following that imaging sequence. So I sent everyone um, an email today with just some feedback related to their practical exams. And, and to everyone, I, I just said, try and get really familiar, excuse me, try and get really familiar with the, you know, the imaging sequence. And if you are, you should have absolutely no problems with regards to the, to the practical exam. Okay. Um, logbook as always for, formatted. Um, one thing about the logbook, um, the, the magic number that we're aiming for at the end of um, the, the, the two years is 1150 studies and, and based on the logbooks that have been submitted so far, that should be uh, something that is achievable. Um, I've just something's just come to mind um, via views. I've jumped over Kylie to the menu on the left hand side of views to um, a section called course guidelines and I've spent yeah. a bit of time just getting some guidelines ready for you. We've got the imaging suite sequence available, so again, make sure that you're really familiar with that. There are guidelines there that you've had access to for the whole course and may I encourage you to read that um, examination guidelines just to make sure on a, that page is five to seven details of you know how to ensure that you're, you're measuring things accurately and then there's another folder here that may be of interest or may not have been interest to you in in short there's um, about ten of the most um, pertinent um, guidelines from the American Society of ECHO on different um, uh, things uh, or different, you know, imaging guidelines or reference documents. So from aortic stenosis to the, you know, normal uh, to chamber quantifications to the evaluation of prosthetic valve. So 
all those documents are, are there available via, via views. Mm -hmm. There's a, um, a Vancouver referencing guide available to you guys as well. Um, if we look at views, the library um, have been swamped at the moment in terms of just getting um, the, the required text available for everyone. But in the next couple of days, I hope the library will make the link available to you guys to, to textbooks um, that are suggested reading for this semester. The suggested reading you can see via the learning guide. That shouldn't be too far away. Even if you don't have the link there, you can still go into the library and you should be able to, you should be able to access, you know, Benita Anderson's book or, or whatever the case may be. Um, I think that's all I wanted to, to, to go through in detail. You'll notice that some of these um, on, on the, the left hand side there, um, in some of the folders, they're empty, like assessments, for example. As it's coming closer to the date, I'll, as I said, um, post the marking criteria and post the folder, the turn it in folder where you can um, submit assessments. Um, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to do. So obviously lectures, um, you know, will, um, you know, come up. Um, from you know each week and and they'll appear there as as always and once they're once they're they've been made available there for you to, to go back to as many times as you like um, I will send your uh, your supervisors an email in the next week detailing what um, you know to expect for the next um, uh, semester. I'll send them a copy of the imaging sequence so that they're very aware of the fact that you know we're going to be asking you guys to, to really do um, you know a comprehensive study at the end of the semester. Uh, and then when it gets closer to the practical exam I'll just send them another email to say please spend time with these people to you know to really make sure that when the practical exam comes around that they're going to be really um, ready to, to do as well as they can. Um, and I think I think that's it. Uh, how are we going for time? Um, so that's about half an hour. Um, but I'm, I'm here to, available for as long as you guys need need me if you've got any questions. Um, furthermore, if you'd prefer to ask a question sort of <laughs> offline and, and, and just have one in, in private, you know, you can, you can either send me an email or, 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 or we can work out a date for that as well. Any any questions? No. Um, I did just with the professional tasks. Are we able to just bring the USB to you on Absolutely. that on campus? So if, if, if you would prefer, if you're coming past this way, to, to drop it in. Um, no problem whatsoever. I'm, I'm no. happy to do that. So, um, just when you're, you know, the day before or something like that, to make sure that I'm here. Good. Yeah. Here. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, Fridays I'm 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 almost never here because I'm at I'm Westmead Private on Fridays. Um, there, uh, Mondays and, and Wednesdays I'm almost always here. Tuesdays and Thursdays it just so it happens to be so days that try to schedule meetings and stuff elsewhere. If I yeah. can. But anyway, just let me know and, and I'm more than happy to meet you, um, Julian. Kylie, the same goes. I mean, I know okay. you're away from here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you feel like a, you know, a trip to Blacktown. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, okay. Look, All yeah. right. If, if, you know, if, if you want to, or if, if questions come to mind, please drop me a line or send me, send me an email. Um, I'll, I'll sign out for the moment. Um, um, I hope you guys do really, really well this semester. Um, Thank you. I'm sure you will, no worries. Thank you. I'm here to, to try, and, try and help you any way I can. Um, All right. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, no worries. Pleasure.
See you, Kylie. See you soon. I'll see you, Julianne. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see you guys. Bye. Thanks, Paul. Bye. 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 Bye.